rolling right along as the Orange are heading into game number eight of the season, if you can believe that. That means another Perry's Inside Scoop brought to you by the official ice cream of Syracuse Athletics, Perry's. Coach, this time of year, apple crisp, throw the Perry's on top, vanilla bean. You don't have to overthink it, nothing, none of their fancy flavors, just put it on. And I know you want to celebrate. I know you'd love to have a bowl of Perry's after a win. And, and how close are you right now? Obviously, the games are close. I think you're, we're about as close as we can get without having the uh, outcome that we, we want really bad. Um, I know you're reluctant to share a lot of this sometimes, but uh, as we sit here at the moment, while it just, just kind of popped in the head, anything you can share uh, health-wise, because you know, one of your key players in particular would be Garrett Williams. Uh, he did not finish the, the game last week, and, and obviously as, as you get to week eight with no buys, there are going to be bumps and bruises out there. It's going to be close with him. And, you know, we're hoping to have him, uh, but it's going to be really close. So, and close is the idea. Close is what you're trying to accomplish in your locker room. You said uh, early in the week that you like what the locker room vibe is right now. Uh, again, well publicized, Tommy DeVito has elected to transfer away. Uh, I wonder between that, you've had a couple key players that have decided they want to be elsewhere, number one. Number two, these close games, which feel like you're putting in all this effort and, and coming up just a tick short. Who are the leaders uh, and, and who holds things together and are you satisfied with, with what you get in the locker room? Well, I'll tell you what, last week they voted on their captains and Cooper Lutz got the special teams captain, Chris Elmore got offensive captain and Mikael Jones got defensive captain. Now, just because you name three captains don't mean that those guys are the only guys that are leading in the locker room. Room. I think when you think back to the rest of the Super 6 seniors and there there's certain guys at certain positions based off of people who have left who have now taken key leadership roles uh, feelings feeling the vacuum so to speak of individuals leaving and now they're becoming new leaders. Talked to Mikel after the game uh, last weekend and just in particular super strong right I mean he, he, you feel like if you got him on your side you talk about an extension of the coaching staff uh, you don't have much to worry about in terms of the, the people listening to him. He's special he really is on and off the football field the way he carries himself and the way that he's the Pied Piper and people are following. He's the team leader in tackles by half that, that's pretty incredible uh, that you know has half again basically as many tackles as the next closest guy uh, Stefan Thompson uh, also on the, the linebacker group there. So Virginia Tech this week Week. This, before your time here, was a game, certainly in the Big East, and so many exciting in the, the Donovan McNabb, uh, Michael Vick storyline uh, is an important one for both uh, programs. What does it conjure up in your mind? And it, you didn't go there in your time at, at Pitt or that type of thing, so you've never been to, to Lane Stadium and, you know, enter Sandman. You don't sleep a lot to begin with, right? <laughs> they say sleep with one eye open, right? And uh, you know you'll be getting ready for, for that uh, kind of entrance. You know, it's, it's a, I'm checking a box. I mean, I uh, got an opportunity here to go to uh, LSU Death Valley, and uh, I've never been to Lane Stadium, and it's going to be special. I hear it's an unbelievable venue. And to be in it for 35 years and have not to play in that stadium uh, is something I'm actually looking forward to. Now, it's a hard place to win, and uh, I wish we were playing them at our place again. But uh, if you can find a way to pull together on the road and win in a place like that, it normally carries a lot of weight. The fact of the matter is, though, the, the past couple of visitors have won there uh, in Blacksburg. And I always think about these pregame conversations, you and your counterpart head coach. And uh, you'll be out there with Justin Fuente uh, chatting for a minute before the game. A and can we presume that you're going to feel each other's pain a little bit here? Because obviously you want to get it going. They want to get it going they had that impressive win against North Carolina to start the year and just haven't really followed it up you know I was out there with Dabo the week before and we were feeling each other's pain uh, this is this is new ground all the stuff that's going on that everybody else is so excited about is is new ground for the coaches and we, you know we will adjust because that's what we do we're green and grown we're not red and rotten that's good coaches adjust and improvise but uh, it's new ground and uh, we're really taking it slow to make sure that we uh, you know, we don't mess up. And it's it's gonna be interesting. When you think about the matchup here, what sticks out, and again, Virginia Tech is not a team that you play on a, a regular basis. Uh, historically, with Coach Bud Foster, they've been extraordinary on defense. That's not uh, been the case the last couple of years, although they have been awful. And then this offense is just having a hard time getting going right now. Well, you know, I, I still, I think the big thing is gonna be the special teams in the game. I mean, they have a fantastic special teams history and uh, we're going to have to be able to match that. They want to run the football. We want to run the football. They're going to 
they're going to find ways to stop the run and hopefully we're going to find ways to stop the run and then maybe whoever throws it the most efficient or a little bit it might be the deciding factor but it's not going to play a bigger hand in the game than the special teams. The special teams are going to be the key. Well, you go back to those Big East days and they had what they called Beamer Ball and, and Syracuse fans of a certain age are going to say, hey, we had that going here first. You know, starters on special teams, Marvin Harrison, uh, Quentin Spotwood, people like that running kicks back on a, on a regular basis and, and the kicking game. I guess that's a good one to finish on. You know, clearly punting has been a little bit of a sore subject this year. What about Andre Schmidt between the ears right now? Clearly capable. Uh, didn't go well in the, the game-winning situation uh, last weekend against Clemson. What do you have there the next time you run him out? Well, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to see. Andre goes through his routines. He's, you got, if you ever watched him kick in practice and in games for the most part, you would not have a lack of faith with this guy. But, uh, you know, I think there's some things that everybody in that group needs to work on. It's like a quarterback that gets sacked. Everyone thinks it's the quarterback, but it could be a receiver. It could be an offensive lineman. When you have a snapper and a holder and a kicker, there's, there's three parts of that. And if one part doesn't do their part, they can actually make the other two look bad. Well, with, we said not long ago that uh, holding in particular, I, I can't believe it goes right as often as it does. It did not go right on the, the game-winning kick opportunity against uh, Clemson. So, Coach, you gave your hands full again, uh, charging up the mountain uh, one more time here in Blacksburg on the road. Best of luck. Thank you, Matt. Orange head coach Dino Babers is with us each week here in the Perry's Inside Scoop.